Every year when the spring rolls around, there's one thing on the mind of a lot of us bass fishermen, and that is simply to go out there and catch bass. Oh God, that was a freaking awesome. However, sometimes during that early springtime, the struggle can be real to go out there and find bass. Now, if you've been watching this channel for any amount of time, something that I stress a lot is it is better to be in the right area with the wrong lure than be in the wrong area with the right lure. So with that in mind, I really like to keep my early springtime fishing extremely simple. And today we're gonna talk all about that. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. This video is brought to you by sportsmansoutfitters.com. Something that I really love about Sportsman's Outfitters is it is run by fishermen. It's not some big corporate big box store. It's guys like you and me that are running the store over there. So if you guys are looking to stock up on tackle, rods, reels, hunting stuff, Click those links down below in the description and you're greatly going to help support the Bass Fishing HQ channel. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about reservoirs, man-made lakes, and then after that, I'm going to talk about natural lakes. Now, no matter the body of water that you are fishing, something that I have really kind of adopted over the last seven or eight years is Brandon Polinick's Percentage Triangle. This is a way that he goes about finding fish, especially during that pre-spawn and post-spawn timeframe when fish are moving from deep water to shallow water and then back out to deep water. So in order to understand this, the biggest things that you need to know as an angler are where do the bass go in the winter and where are they going to spawn? If you know those two points, you can actually create these percentage triangles on any body of water that you are fishing. Now, Brandon Polinick's theory on this percentage triangle is that the biggest bass in the lake are going to use this triangle as they move from wintering areas to spawning grounds and then back out to their summertime area. For example, if you kind of look at this lake here, you kind of have a bluff that kind of goes out into the water. It's a very steep break on the end of a point. Now, this is a type of place that you see a lot of bass winter in. Now, when it comes to where fish are going to spawn, most of the time this is going to be up into the creeks, maybe certain pockets. What you're really looking for here is protected water as well as hard bottom. And hard bottom can come in the form of sand, rock, or it can simply be something like a stump that is on a mud flat, something that gives a bass a hard bottom to attach their eggs to. So now that you have these couple of points, if you actually draw a triangle between these points, you're going to create a percentage triangle. Somewhere in this percentage triangle is where you're going to find some of the biggest bass in the lake. So now that we know our percentage triangle, we know where fish potentially could be, the biggest thing that I'm going to do is once I get out to the water, I'm really going to see what the bait fish activity is in this percentage triangle. If there seems like there's a lot of bait in the area, this is probably my biggest clue that, hey, there's probably going to be bass close by. So now we have our percentage triangle. Now we know there's bait fish. Now we go about actually attacking the water. If the water temperature when you're going out in the spring is in the 40s, anywhere in the 40s, I'm going to start closer to the wintering areas and start working my way into the spawning areas. Now, if the water is in the 50s, especially if it's mid 50s and higher, I'm going to start in the spawning grounds and work out towards the wintering areas. Now, when it comes to a natural lake, you can still use the percentage triangle. And again, the biggest things you wanna know are where do the fish winter and where do they spawn? Now, a lot of times when you're fishing a natural lake, most of your bass are going to spawn up on flats. Maybe it's a protected flat that has about three or four foot of water. You know, natural lakes that are in the south, they tend to have a lot of lily pads up on these flats or reeds or grass that the bass can actually spawn in and around. A couple of years ago, I was fishing a Bassmaster Open on the Harris chain of lakes where I ended up in 25th out of 225 guys. And I used the percentage triangle to get that finish. This was the area I ended up fishing in the tournament. And out in deeper water, there was a couple of big clumps of hydrilla where I knew that the bass were probably wintering. I had caught a few fish here, but I felt as if they were going to be moving shallow. Now there was a very small pocket that had a lot of lily pads and hard bottom where I'd also seen some beds. So I knew where the fish were and I knew where they were going. Now if you notice, this percentage triangle is actually reverse of the other ones. I have two areas where the bass winter feeding into one area where they spawn. I really think you can use the percentage triangle both ways. When I got to the lake, I 
sidled back and forth here and I actually found a small bare spot which ended up being a shell bed in this percentage triangle. This exact spot was where I caught all my fish on a rattle trap and a big worm and I was able to cash a $3,500 check. A lot of natural lakes up in the north, a lot of those flats, they might be rock flats or you might have some weed flats with some scattered boulders and things like that. Again, those are great places that bass are going to spawn. Now, when it comes to where bass winter in natural lakes, a lot of times this is going to be some of the deepest water in your lake. Up north, you tend to have natural lakes that do actually have some deeper water, sometimes really, really deep water. But the biggest thing that I'm looking for here is usually something that's kind of in that 15 to 25 foot zone. If it has a little bit of rock bottom that's close to some of the deepest water on that lake, that is probably going to be a good wintering area, especially if it's really close to a drop of some sort. Now, again, I'm going to make that percentage triangle between the wintering areas and the spawning grounds. I'm going to draw it out and I'm going to do the exact same process. Now, this map actually shows a lake up in Michigan called Higgins Lake. And when I first started using using the percentage triangle, this is what helped me to catch fish when I was up there fun fishing with some buddies. The year before, we were actually at this same lake catching some smallmouth off beds. We were catching them in these very small bays that had rock and docks close by. Now again, I used the percentage triangle and I figured that the bass were probably wintering on this deep offshore hump that was right next to a deep break. When we went back in the spring of the year, the bass were not still deep, but they weren't spawning in the exact place where we actually started catching them extremely well on suspending jerk baits was this very small subtle point right here we caught several three and four pound smallmouth and just had an absolute ball and that is when i saw the power of the percentage triangle when you have water temperatures that are kind of between 45 and 60 degrees, a lot of times bass are going to hit one of my favorite lures, which is a crankbait. So I go out a lot of times when I'm trying to find bass in the springtime and I literally throw nothing but a crankbait. Now, if I'm fishing a little bit deeper in this percentage triangle, maybe I'm fishing closer to the wintering grounds where the bass are a little bit deeper, or maybe I'm fishing some secondary points that are kind of leading into some of these spawning pockets. One of my favorite lures is a Strike King 5XD. Now, the reason I like a 5XD over other deep diving crankbaits is the 5XD kind of has a smaller profile to it, but it still gets down to about 15 foot of water if you're fishing it on 10 or 12 pound test so you can get this bait down deep but again it's a little bit smaller it doesn't move as much water and i really think that bass will hit a smaller crankbait a little bit better in that cold cold water now the biggest thing when it comes to cranking in the springtime is all about cadence or speed. A lot of times the bass aren't going to want a crankbait absolutely ripping. But if I fish a ledge in the summertime, sometimes I'm going to bring a crankbait as fast as I can to cause a reaction strike. But if you're fishing in colder water, that's not what you always want to do. Getting that bait on the bottom and just kind of taking the bottom slowly is what you want. Something that I really like to do with pretty much all my crankbaits is I'm going to reel and pull and pause it. Reel, pull and pause it. That kind of makes that bait go and then it'll hesitate a little bit and keep going. You'd be surprised that some days bass are only going to bite it on that little bit of a hesitation there and you will out catch a lot of your friends by doing that pull approach. Now I love that 5XD but probably the workhorse, the couple of crankbaits that I use the most during the springtime are the Rapala DT6 and Arapala DT10. If you guys have been around bass fishing you will know that these DT series crankbaits are extremely good in cold water. One of the biggest reasons they're made from balsa, they tend to have a little bit of a tighter wiggle and they really don't have any rattles in them, which are all great characteristics of a cold water crankbait. Now I'm going to throw these crankbaits everywhere. I'm going to throw them on secondary points, especially the ones where the creek channel hits right up against them. I'm also going to throw them on creek channel swing banks. If there's a little bit of a deeper bank or a bluff that's kind of leading into a pocket, that is another great place to throw this crankbait. And the big thing here with all these crankbaits is I am just trying to get 
one bite. If I can just get one bite, maybe I maybe I fish a secondary point and I catch a bass on it and it's a good one. If I think there's more fish there, I'm gonna slow down with something like a jig or something like a Ned rig and really pick apart that point. But the fastest way to really find bass is simply by just using a crankbait. Now, once I start getting into really, really shallow water, that's a lot of times when I pick up some sort of square bill crankbait. The Strike King 1.5 is one of my favorite baits. I feel like I catch a lot more fish on this once that water temperature kind of gets in the upper 50s. Another one, and if you've been around the channel, you know that I love this bait, and that's a Berkeley Fritz side. I have caught a ton of bass on this little guy, and I, I absolutely love this. If I'm fishing around stumps or, or places where I think the bass are really starting to set up to spawn, I'm going to use these crankbaits to catch these fish. Now, there are times where you're going to be able to use lipped crankbaits in natural lakes. You know, if you have a, a hard rock bottom, even if you have some grass, you can fish that crankbait kind of around the outskirts on the edge. That is a great way. But one of my favorite baits to use is actually a jerk bait. Now this might be a, a shallow running jerk bait like this or a deep diving jerk bait. In most natural lakes, you have clear water. And anytime you're fishing in that pre-spawn early spring time frame and you have clear water, a jerk bait is probably going to be one of your best friends. Now these are both Berkeley Stunna jerk baits. I also like Mega Bath, the 110, the 110 plus one, the 110 plus two. And really I'm going to decide what depth jerk bait depending on how how deep I'm fishing. If I'm fishing a seven or eight foot flat that has some scattered grass on it, I'll probably pick up the jerk bait that's gonna dive about five or six foot deep, the shallow one. Now, if I'm fishing maybe a rock pile that's in 12, 13 foot of water, that's when I'm gonna pick up the deeper one, the one that dives maybe 10 foot deep. Now, like the crankbaits, one of the biggest things that you wanna do is find the cadence that the bass likes. Sometimes those bass want just a little bit longer pauses, so finding the cadence in that little bit colder water is really key to catching bass on a jerk bait. Now, another bait that I tend to use a lot if I'm fishing anywhere from that two foot zone to six foot zone is a lipless crankbait. And whether you wanna catch smallmouth, largemouth, or spots, a lipless crankbait is a great bait. There's really three ways that I will fish a lipless crankbait. You know, one way, if I'm fishing around grass, I'm gonna let that bait kind of get hung in the grass, I'm gonna rip it out and let it fall down. That's a great way and one of the most popular ways to catch bass on a lipless crankbait. Now, something that I really like to do, especially in early spring, is simply just yo-yo this bait across the bottom. So whether I'm fishing in three foot of water or even if I'm fishing out to 15, 20 foot of water, you can cast your lipless out and actually yo-yo it off the bottom, kind of like you were fishing a jig during the summertime. Now, the last way to fish a lipless is almost kind of slow rolling the lipless. And I tend to do this when I'm fishing around a harder bottom. If I'm fishing up north and I'm fishing around a lot of rocks, I'm gonna cast this bait out. I'm gonna kind of let the top of that bait just kind of nick the bottom and just try to be as slow as I can. Every now and then I'm gonna pull that rod up and kind of let that thing flutter down, but it's really kind of a slow roll approach. Now, if I'm in the south, you might be doing the same exact technique. You're gonna be doing this on shell beds or on a sand bottom. But again, once you catch a fish, whether it's on a jerk bait or a lipless crankbait, that is when you can kind of slow down. Maybe you catch a bass on some of the outskirts of Kissimmee grass down in Florida. That might be where you pick up a flipping stick and start pitching that Kissimmee grass line because there might be more bass in the grass than on the outside of the grass. Or maybe you're up north and you find a little bit of a rock pile, you catch a few on that rock pile. One of my favorite backup baits is throwing a Ned rig. Whether you're fishing for smallmouth or largemouth, a Ned rig is a great cold water early spring bait that you can use. Either way, if you use that percentage triangle and you use a rattle bait like a crankbait, a lipless, or a jerk bait, you're going to be able to find bass a lot faster out there this year on any type of water. Now, if you guys want to know a little bit more about fishing a cold water jerk bait, I actually made a video that I'm going to link right here. It's all about fishing this bait in cold water, which is just what we talked about. So whether you're fishing it in the fall or in the spring, I think this video will help you out. Subscribe to the channel, comment below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.